Is this visit more about optics, more symbolic than significant? Thank you. I, I think certainly in the run up to the visit, there's been a lot of attention to the optics above everything else. Now, in the days right before, it's just been on Friday that we finally started to hear some briefing from government officials that signaled that they expect to have some deeper policy statements, some policy commitments result out of this visit. Um, they've been talking about some memorandums of understanding between the two governments, something focused on security in the Indo-Pacific, uh, something focused on counterterrorism, homeland security. We'll have to see. I don't have more details than uh, what we heard from this briefing. Uh, but certainly the president himself seems very focused on this stadium gathering and the very large crowds that he's going to be welcomed by when he arrives in Ahmedabad, Gujarat. Uh, do you think that a closer relationship within the U.S. and India is a hedge against the rise of China? I, I think there has been a, a, a convergence of national interests on the part of India and the United States, and that's been a process taking place over the course, really, of the last 15 years, if you think about it, um, that has made possible this coming together of two countries that didn't have the best bilateral relationship throughout much of the 20th century. I think both countries, both the United States and India, want to see an Asia that isn't dominated by any one power. India certainly is a very independent country that seeks its own primacy in the Indian Ocean region. Um, and so that has been a pillar underlying a lot of the, the strategic and defense cooperation that's grown so well over the course of the last recent years. Um, Alyssa, how is, does the challenge of persuading India to open its economy, though, compare with the challenge of opening China's economy? Well, it's a very different challenge, isn't it? I mean, I, I, I think they uh, uh, China opened its economy, but it also has very... Um, uh, uh, companies that are state-owned enterprises that are market dominant in their own way. There are different challenges with China involving, uh, let's say, uh, economic espionage. Those aren't the kinds of, of issues that we have with India and that are longstanding trade and economic concerns. India began opening its economy in 1991, has been slowly becoming a much more open place, but still has some significant barriers. All you have to do is pick up the annual national trade estimate that the United States Trade Representative's Office puts out to take a look at the myriad concerns uh, that U.S. trade negotiators are working on every year. I, I, one other thing I, I will note, you know, in the last couple of years, there's been signs that the, the Modi government has been raising tariffs on a number of things, including on the budget they most recently released. More than 50 items see, saw uh, tariff raises. So there's some concerns that India is now moving in a much more protectionist direction. That'll make it harder, I think, uh, to advance uh, a greater economic opening between the two countries. Mm, and weirdly, perhaps some common ground between uh, President Trump and Narendra Modi. But you do say oh, that yeah. a failure to announce anything is going to be potentially an embarrassment for both of them. So can you identify any low hanging fruit, something that uh, that they could point to at the end of this trip? Yes, I, I think in the, the trade negotiating channel, it now appears that they will not be able to announce a success of any kind, which indeed is disappointing since people have been working on this for months and months. Uh, I think they're likely to pivot to the defense sales, defense procurements, where there is at very least a $2.6 billion a defense acquisition that India will be making from uh, from the United States. It will be a, a naval helicopter, the Seahawks. That's a very nice deal to be able to point to. And there's one more that may be in the works. I don't know if it's moved through to final signature uh, that would involve the acquisition of an additional round of Apache helicopters. So these will be a, a way to point to continued commercial and defense engagement between both countries. But it does not represent the culmination of a, a positive outcome from trade negotiators sitting across the table from each other and finding a way to reach agreement. Uh, Alyssa, give us a sense of how important India has become to the U.S. when it comes to uh, defense deals, because we know that last year uh, that amounted to something like uh, $15 billion from zero 10 years ago. I mean, India is playing a pretty important role in this. 
Yeah, if you look cumulatively, I, I mean, India's major defense supplier for decades and decades was actually Russia. And in the last two decades, India has begun to really diversify who it sources from and to create its own array of, of different providers. Now, this creates its own challenges for integrating its own systems, but it does mean that the India-US defense relationship has dramatically closened. So the number that people quote in the United States is that over the course of the past decade or so, defense procurements cumulatively have gone from zero to $18 billion. Now, if things go through on this visit as planned, we'll probably be saying more like $21 billion or higher. Let's see what they say on Tuesday. Uh, but that's a very positive thing to be able to, to showcase. Isn't it also true that India is important for American big tech? It provides a scale that American companies need. I mean, where are we on that? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. India is important for uh, American big tech companies. I mean, where are we on that? Oh, oh, you mean high skilled workers? Is that what you mean? That's right. Yes, uh, in two ways. For example, uh, most American major tech firms have a strong presence in India now. IBM, for example, has more than 100,000 employees in India. Think of every major tech company you can think of, and they have uh, a, a major presence in India and likely to have a strong research and development um, a center in India as well. Now, the United States also has provisions for uh, skilled workers to, to work in the United States as non-immigrants, and Indians are well represented in that category. Um, in fact, if you look at the data on this, um, over the course of the last 15 years, uh, Indian citizens have gone from being around 40% of those petitions approved to you know, the Department of Homeland Security uh, to now more than 70%. So I think that really illustrates the strong competitiveness of India in high-skilled work uh, and the importance of Indian citizens working in the United States in some of these uh, high-skilled uh, tech sector roles. Uh, Alyssa, we were talking about some common ground, an increasing common ground that exists between the US and India in terms of defence, but there are some problems there as well, aren't there? Uh, namely, the US attempt to secure some peace with the Taliban. What are India's concerns there? I think the president is likely to hear quite a bit about India's concerns uh, when he has his bilateral meeting, certainly during his private meeting with the prime minister, and there will have a, a, a larger delegation meeting on Tuesday as well. Um, India has been concerned about what will happen if there is a sort of uh, resurgence of the Taliban um, and not a full cessation of violence, and in fact, a return of terrorism to the subcontinent. Um, if Pakistan uh, eases up and doesn't have to defend its northwest front, will there be a return to uh, a much stronger component of terrorism looking across to India on that eastern front? Uh, remember back in the days of you know, 1999, the hijacking of the Indian Airlines flight from Nepal down to Delhi ended up in Kandahar. I mean, this was these were days of some terrible terrorist acts, and I think that's something that concerns India deeply. So they'll want to uh, speak very bluntly and plainly, I think, with the American delegation and, and share their views.